And welcome back, everybody, to Handicap Hustle. I am your host, Jim Breslow. We are joined by the great Richard Frazier of phrasewins.com. That's phrasewins.com. And you can also follow him on our Substack for this show, Handicap Hustle on Substack, where you can track all of Richard's picks, except when he doesn't give out any picks. (laughs) <laughs> and that was the case this weekend. It was a very unusual weekend. And Richard's going to have to explain it all to us. I don't know if you've ever had a weekend like this past weekend where all of your uh, the guys that uh, that follow you in Vegas and place bets based on your picks depend on your picks each week. You didn't give them any. And uh, our subscribers expect picks from you and you didn't give any. So what happened, Rich? Well, as I mentioned before, I'm somewhat of a perfectionist and I have a a rule of thumb that if I give out a game and the game doesn't win, would I have any regrets on giving that game out? And the fact is that every game this week, I would have had some sort of regret on if it didn't win. Now, as it turned out, you know, a lot of my instincts were correct, but that's, you know, besides the point now, but Normally, uh, the games with the highest deviation, the other factors that I put in play all follow suit. But for some reason, and I can't remember the last time this happened, uh, the there were, there were flaws in the other factors aside from the deviations. So based on that, I decided to to take a pass on on this week and. Uh, you know, once we climb into this a little bit, I, you know, I think you'll see why you know, there was 14 games this past week in the NFL. Uh, 11 of them had a road favorite in it. Do you know what the record on those road favorites were this week? 11 no. and 0. 11 and 0. I mean, to have 11 of 14 games have the road team be favored in is crazy to begin with for every single one of those road teams to cover is a whole nother yeah and so that's yeah. a highly what's unusual. uh what's your you have any takeaway about those two facts that there were so many road uh favorites and that they all covered well you know we talked a little bit about last night's game and and uh buffalo at the jets how how can buffalo be one one and a half point favorites over the jets only one and a one and a half point favorites over the jets that doesn't make any sense to me what are these books doing are they just letting computers pick their lines now i mean are they not factoring anything in and if you look at all the other road favorites that, that played this week, only two of the 11 were favored by more than three points. That's it. And we're talking about good teams playing lousy teams. So yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I want to talk about that game last night uh, in a minute, but just to go back to you not giving out any picks. First of all, has there ever been a weekend like that before where you didn't give out any picks? No, there, there. I, I don't ever recall there being a weekend where I gave out zero picks. There's been weeks where I've given out two instead of three, but n- never zero. And what did your customer base in Vegas, what was their reaction when uh, they were waiting for their picks on Friday and didn't get any? Well, I uh, I sent them all a text, and I think you received it too. That I just explained my my uh, situation, and that I just wasn't comfortable. Something it just seemed like a, a very strange week to me. And uh, I treat uh, everybody's money like I do my own money, and I want to be a hundred percent certain when I give out a pick. So, uh, okay, now the what's the it. difference? What's the difference between your instincts? And your modeling, which you said nothing modeled out to properly give a pick, yet you had instincts for some picks. Well, my my instincts are to go with the the, the highest deviations, but but like I said, there's a few other models that I factor in after the deviations, and normally those deviations uh, match up with the modeling that I put in after that. But for some reason this week, none of them did. 
So, oh, but but uh, it, it seemed to me you were implying that instinctually you were leaning toward a couple teams. You chose not to give them out, and then well, they, and well, then those teams ended I, up covering. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I I worked years ago. I worked with this this Ivy League uh, stat guy, um, and uh, he he told me that the the deviations are the most important aspect of the program. But but that was a long time ago, and and the uh, the market has changed a lot since then. And I've added a few different uh, bells and whistles to the program throughout the years. So <clears throat> when those parts of the program didn't match up with the deviations, then yeah, instinctively I wanted to go with the deviations, but the other modeling didn't match up. So I decided. So what are, what, what are the are there a couple games that you were very close to giving out a pick on? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was close to giving out the, the, the Ravens. Um, and, uh, I was close to giving out the chargers. I was close to giving out the Bengals, but, but with being fair, I will also say, cause I don't want to be this. Well, I, I was going to do this and I was going to do that. I was also close to giving out the Cowboys and I was also close to giving out the Titans. So, but their uh, their modeling didn't match up. The other three had the deviations, but not the modeling that, that follows. So, you know, I mean, I could see there and say, "Damn, I should have went with the instincts and gave give out the highest deviations." But but it's it's not fair to to say that. That's hindsight, and uh, we know hindsight's twenty twenty. So, uh, of the five games that I was looking at, it three of them won, two of them lost. So. That's All right, so let, let, let's talk about a few of those games. And, and just to remind everybody, uh, since you went zero and zero this weekend, you're still maintaining your 64% win clip for the year. You've maintained that at a nine and five clip. And we'll talk about possible picks for this up, upcoming weekend. Uh, but yeah, last night's game, Jets, Bills, you and I texted about it. I was begging you to convince me not to bet the farm on the Bills because it just seemed too damn obvious. And I am. I've been around the block long enough to know that when the bet seems too obvious that you should be cautious. Uh, however, I was at the Dodger game yesterday and when I'm having a couple beers at a Dodger game, I end up taking my phone out and making some bets I wouldn't have otherwise made. And, and so I was down quite a bit from the Dodgers losing to the Mets. So I had to get healthy on uh, the game last night. And so I, I didn't follow your advice and I did go heavy on the bills uh, fortunately, but man, it was a scary game. Uh, the Jets missed two field goals that would have made the difference. So the Bills end up barely covering that game. Well, I mean, that was one of the craziest games I've ever seen, uh, especially for a Sunday or Monday night game. Um, it, it seems to me that the the officials did everything except put a win in in the Jets uh win loss column. They gave them every opportunity to win that game. Uh called the the fouls, the, the penalties they needed to call, you know, Rodgers gets the uh, rough in the passer call, Allen doesn't get it. I mean, just everything, the 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 late hits, everything went the Jets way and the Jets still couldn't get out of their own way to win that game. Yeah, so I think it it, it was the, the most penalized game of the season, for sure. I don't know how it ranks up all time, but in watching it, it was just not fun to watch. I, I couldn't believe the number of plays where there were, there are two fouls on the play, off well, holding, offense, offsides, defense, the two fouls uh, against well, each other out. The and, there, there were over 200 yards of penalties accepted in the game. That doesn't even count the offsetting penalties. So. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there was at least four plays of offsetting penalties that, yeah, would have driven it up to over 300 yards. The question is, was this crew over-officiating or – were the two teams just that bad as far as violating, uh, you know, creating penalties or a third 
is there just too many uh, things to call in the NFL these days? I mean, do they really need to call all these penalties? Why can't you let a little bit of holding go go on and a little bit of pass interference go on and and just keep playing and um, or loosen the rules in some way? I mean, it's just not fun for the viewer. Yeah, I, I, you know, I love sports so much, not only football, but all sports. And, and I, I don't want to be one of these conspiracy theorists, but uh, geez, with some of these games you watch, you know, you, you, it makes you wonder if, if, if the officials aren't doing everything they can to, to give certain teams an edge, at least on the field. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're going to win the game, but they sure are trying their best to to help them get the win. And and last night's game was a perfect example. I mean, yeah. If, well, but hold on a second, because we've had this debate before, and we're on opposite ends of the spectrum. I don't believe that there's any fixes in or any conspiracies and so on. As I told you before, I, I think that it would just be too easy to expose that, and the NFL would be dead in the water the next day if there was any evidence that they were that that the league itself was pushing officials to uh push a game in one direction or another you actually misspoke by the way though about the game last night because there was a roughing call um against the jets also and it was also a very questionable call i don't know if you remember that but there was both teams got uh roughing the passer calls that were very questionable and in fact um uh aaron Rodgers commented after the game that you thought both of them were bad calls. Yeah, it seemed a little ridiculous. Um, yeah, some of them seemed really bad, including the rough in the passer on me. That's not rough in the passer. Um, I was about to play sarcastic the ball if we're going to call those things. And I thought the one on Kinlaw was not rough in the passer either. So. Well, uh, do you uh, do you think the 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 UFC is all in the up and up? Do you know the UFC has the same parent company as the WWE? Did you know that? Well, uh, I, UFC I don't follow. I know boxing I used to follow, and that certainly had a track record of of being questionable. Um, but you know, you you a a fight was decided by three referees scoring the bout. And that was it. You know, it wasn't points on the board. It wasn't yeah. hits, and, right? But, so sports, it's, but sports does fall under the entertainment category, does it not? Yeah. I, I just think that, you know, even those scandals with boxing, I think it would have come out. And maybe there were a couple that, that have come out. But show me in the history of the NFL any evidence that has come to light, an email, a text message, a, a, a phone call, somebody alleging, even alleging it, that the league had somehow sent down a directive to sway a game one way or the other. There's not a single piece of evidence. Well, no, I mean, the NFL is one of the most powerful sports leagues out there, the, the most powerful sports league out there. And uh, I mean, even if there was something like that, I, I didn't say I was a conspiracy theorist. I just hinted at the fact that it could maybe be possible but they're they're powerful enough as an organization that they could uh, they they could get this swept under the rug. And besides, I mean, just so all they would have to do is tell officials, hey, you know, keep a close eye on this, or you know, you know, I, I'm not saying they're being very directive in 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 what they're saying in terms of call more penalties on the, the Bills than you do the Jets. I'm not saying they have to be that specific, but hey, let's let's keep it tight. Let's keep it tight. Close yeah. game. You know. But but regardless of that, the league right now is plagued. You and I, I know agree on this by too many penalties and too many replays. Now, easier for us to sit here and bitch about that as the NFL continues to make more and more money. I mean, each year the value of the franchise is going up, the value of the TV contracts are going up. So even though the product that we're watching we don't think is as good, they continue to do better and better. Well, I, I think part of them doing better and better is keeping these games close, doing what they have to do to keep these games close. Nobody wants to watch a 37 to 7 blowout in these games. People are going to tune out. The money is too great. You're going conspiracy on me again. To I'm keep the just... game close requires a conspiracy to keep the game close. The Cowboys <laughs> game wasn't close. No, somebody didn't get the, 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 the memo the to keep that game close? 
it doesn't matter. Everybody bought their red zone package or their uh, NFL package, so they don't have to worry about it for that game. These night games, a little different story. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I'll compare it to baseball. Baseball had a problem, recognized it, took them all way too long to recognize it, but they corrected it. And that was the games were taking way too long. They were going from an average of two hours and 20 minutes when I was a kid to three hours and 20 minutes. Yet the game was still nine inning and with three outs per inning. So I agree. Was all I, do, yeah. I do like the, the changes in baseball. I like the pitch clock. That way the batter's not stepping out, adjusting his gloves, banging his cleats. The pitcher's not stepping off the mound, playing with the rosin bag for a couple of minutes. And the, the speed of the game has increased, and I do like that. As a matter of fact, in that game yesterday, uh, pitcher was just a, a split second late. A Dodger pitcher was a split second yeah. late with his pitch, and they, uh, they gave the guy a walk because there was three balls. Yeah, I, I didn't have great – the best seats, my mine were down the line a bit, so I, I didn't wasn't paying that close attention to how close it was, but I did observe when they all of a sudden gave the guy first base. I'm like, what the heck? That's the last thing we could afford to do is, is give up a, a walk based on uh, the the uh, the pitch clock. Um, but, but yeah, it, it caused me to think about baseball, which in the past everybody would critique it as being too slow of a sport – even compared to football, it was considered too slow, right? Now football is too slow. Baseball's not too slow. In fact, baseball doesn't have TV timeouts. Isn't that great? I think it's one of the few sports that doesn't have a TV timeout. It's got a natural timeout in between innings. Yes. Once an inning start, they're not just stopping the play so that we can go ahead and run three minutes of commercials. Uh, uh, unless there's a pitching change. Yeah, but again, that's natural. The guy has to come in and warm up. They're not doing it. The, for purposes of ads. The, the other thing about the NFL now is that the the I understand scoring plays, change of possession plays, but now they have this thing they're calling replay assist that automatically comes from a booth where a coach doesn't even have to challenge that somebody's radioing down from the booth. I think you blew that one. Take another look. You know, the change out to a touchdown. Well, it happened, well, it happened and it happened it happened last night and, and was yeah, very interesting jets right down. yeah jets touchdown it happened there was a few other plays that happened on as well where replay what, assist just corrected it immediately without a chance it was the well the controversial one was the aaron Rodgers fumble that was originally ruled a fumble but then yes. they ruled it a a incomplete forward pass it came down from above then uh, Buffalo what, wanted what, to challenge it they weren't because they said, they said, well, wait a minute. Yes, his arm was going forward, but he didn't have an intention of throwing the ball. He was intending to tuck the ball, not to throw it, and they wouldn't let Buffalo challenge it because the booth had already reviewed it prior to the challenge. Yeah, exactly. And on that play, Aaron Rodgers clearly was not going to throw the ball. So that was a fumble. But again – they didn't call it a fumble, even though that was a fumble. You could see the way his hand came down. He was going to tuck that ball. He was yeah. not going to throw it. The ball just fell out of his hand. So, therefore, it was a fumble. Yeah, so it was it was reviewed by, you know, I don't know what this new rule is that allows them just to impromptu overturn something, but that's basically what happened. It was done very quickly, right, because it has to be done before the next ball is snapped. Right. Um. So, so they – quickly overruled it on the field, said that it was an incomplete pass. So now they're lining up. When a team challenges a foul, it seems like they take five minutes to review the damn thing. They look at it from every possible angle and this and that. So that was the interesting right. thing there is that there they looked at it very quickly and determined that and wanted to play on. And then that prevented from Buffalo from having more of like a five-minute review of the play. Yeah, uh... Very strange these these new rules that just seem to pop into games where nobody really talks about them before the season. But uh, in any case, uh, it, it is a faster process than a challenge. So we'll yeah, no, I like I like the fast process. One other thing to point out from last night's game that I found interesting, since I'm always bitching about the new kickoff rule. So the jets after uh i think it was after buffalo scored the jets had a personal foul uh for a guy mouthing off to the ref 
It was a 15 yard penalty to be assessed on the kickoff. So that's a substantial penalty, 15 yards on the kickoff. So now the guy's kicking off from the 50, but the players still line up (laughs) at the same yard line. So there's absolutely zero impact from this 15 yard penalty on the kickoff. It just means the guy kicks Uh, it from the 50 yard instead of the 35, but everything else about it's the same. Anytime there's an after the fact penalty on an extra point or on a scoring play, and it's going against the uh, the receiving team, uh, it it, uh, it it doesn't matter because I mean the obviously the kicker has the ability to kick the ball into the end zone anyway, giving him 10, 15 extra yards to do it. Right, but it used it used to allow you to do a little kind of squib kick or a little pop up kick to to really pin the team back. And now because your players are still lined up at the same yard line, it, it doesn't give you that. Anyway, enough about the kickoffs. Uh, Lions Cowboys, I do think is worth covering just because, uh, it's such a debacle going on in Dallas. Uh, that was definitely a shocker. It made me look to see who the Cowboys were going to be playing this weekend. Cause usually we like, I like taking teams that got their asses handed to them and, and coming back the following week, but it, I, I think they're on the bye. Yeah, they, they have a bye week. So, uh, I, I was looking at that, uh, yesterday as well. Uh, I was thinking of you, and uh, I looked at uh, week seven schedule and seen that they have a bye week. And and if any team definitely needed a bye week, it's them. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, the and then the Jets are going to be an interesting team to watch coming off of blowing <sighs> it, at, at, you know, after blowing, you, you know, every opportunity last night. Now well, they, pick, and- they pick up the guy out of um, – who's the receiver they just picked up from the Raiders? Uh, did they get Devontae Adams? Yeah, Devontae Adams. Oh, yeah. He's already he, – he took a red-eye flight last I, night. He uh, was in New York I, this morning. I, uh, I've been buried in, uh, in, in my data already uh, for this coming week. So, uh, I, I've watched no TV today. Uh, uh, but one thing I did notice that uh, Pittsburgh opened that Sunday night game as a one-point favorite. Now they are one-and-a-half-point dogs. At home. Is that to the Jets? Yes. That's Devontae Adams. So I think, you know, look, the Jets offense for sure looked better last night with their new uh, head coach, et cetera. Now, I I didn't really realize this, but Rodgers, Devontae Adams, during the like five years they played together, were the number one duo by far as far as touchdowns, et cetera when they're playing together at green Bay. So yeah. people are thinking this is going to make a material difference. And that's what moved that line. Well, yeah, I'm sure that's what moved the line, but the, the jets are going to have to do a better job in, in other facets of the game as well, especially their, their, their pass blocking. I mean, I, I, you questioned Aaron Rodgers earlier uh, in a broadcast. And and I said, I, I think Aaron Rodgers still has it. And I, I think last night showed that he can still throw the ball, but, uh, but he does need some protection. You know uh, it would be nice if he had a little more of a chance to throw the ball downfield, but he has to do these quick releases all the time because he has guys on him, you know, uh, the, the Jets aren't dead. The Jets are still expected to win some games. Whether or not they're buried uh, too far to make the playoffs, who, who knows? I don't know what their schedule is the rest of the season. But, uh, yeah, that, that Sunday night game will be interesting because, uh, obviously, you know, I, I don't let my head and my heart uh, conflict with each other in terms of, you know, if a, if a play comes up, if the Jets come up as a play, then – then that's uh, that's going to be something to you know to look at. But um, the um, I think the biggest game of next weekend it looks to me is going to be Kansas City at San Francisco. Yeah, that's another game that that had a swing. Kansas City opened uh, that game as a one point favorite at DraftKings anyway, and now San Fran is a one or one and a half point favorite. So yeah, um, I would pick San. I would pick San Francisco. In that game, they're getting stronger and stronger. Kansas City, uh, Kansas City's coming up a bye week, though I think, right? Uh, yeah, Kansas yeah. City did not play yesterday, so yeah, and they had an easy or, or, game or Sunday 
or Thursday. And they had an they had an easy game before that also. So that's a little concerning. San Francisco's coming off of what? Who did they just uh I know they lost to Arizona at home and then last weekend they they beat they the won, Seahawks. Right? They beat the Seahawks uh -huh. on Thursday. Yeah. So any chance we're going to get a, some extra picks out of you this weekend to make up you for know, this past weekend? I, I, uh, I am anxiously awaiting to plug my data in. I, I have my, my raw numbers calculated. Uh, I, uh, later on tonight, I should have some sort of idea as to, uh, what my plays may be. Uh, it's it's not going to be hard set tonight because uh, obviously until they get through, uh, you know, a couple of days of practice here, um, I, I need the, the numbers to kind of settle in a little more. But uh, But we'll be in action this week. That I can promise you. Okay. I know it's not always three picks a weekend. One prior weekend you gave out only two, last weekend zero. So – that means four or five picks is always a possibility. <laughs> I'm not going to overdo it. Um, I, I still. Well, but if the do... numbers, if if the numbers justify it, though. I, I yeah, it's whatever the numbers justify exactly because if I see a big drop off in in my deviations, then I I usually cut the line. Now, if there's happens to be four games that they're fairly close in deviation and then a separation between the rest of the group, then then we could have more, but, uh, but we just have to wait and see how it plays out. But, you know, if anything, I'll say that I do feel good about yesterday is the fact that I, it was an educational experience for me. Now I know the way I want to uh, prioritize my, my data. And so, um, you know, if I had yesterday to do or Sunday to do all over again, then, you know, I would have given out plays, but better to be safe than sorry. That's my motto. Uh, there's money at stake here. And I, uh, like I said, I, I take my risk management very seriously. Final question for you. Do you love your job? Um, I, uh, I, I, I like my job. Uh, I like numbers. like not love, huh? Well, here's the thing. I, I like numbers. I always did. I'm a stats guy. I, I mean, I got stats going back to the, the late 1800s that I kept when I was a kid. I definitely love sports. So the combination of the two of them uh, has, has proven to be a, a very successful venture for me. The, the problem with it now is that, that the data is more complex. The numbers are more complex. It's a lot more work for me. So anytime that you have to work twice as much to get the same result, obviously there's going to be a little you know drop off in terms of how much you love your work. So that's the way I feel right yeah. now. But once the work is done, yes, I feel comfortable with it until the games are actually played. And then if I lose, I'm pissed off. But as long as I win, I feel very content. Yeah. Well, I think you should love your job because I think that any job where all it is is about thinking about football, looking at football, watching football, I mean, you know. How, how well, could that be bad? That sounds pretty well, good to the, me. The difference between this and being in the stock market is that I directly control my own fate in this, whether I win or whether I lose. That means if I win, I get the praise, but if I lose, I, I get the bad part of it. Uh, in the stock market, when I was managing money, you know, I can't control whether stocks go up and down. I'm relying on our research department, our analysts, you know, whatever. But um, this, uh, this job is, is high risk, high reward job. So, uh, I'll take that. Well, the, the, the reason I asked it, I've, I've got a buddy who's, um, trying to figure out what he wants to do next, but he's, he's been a professional poker player in the past and, and he loves, loves, loves playing poker. It's all the guy talks about. I'm like, so why don't you go back to being a professional poker player? It's what you love. He says, well, I don't feel like I'm adding anything to society or building anything through that. And I'm like, 
who the hell cares if you if you're making money at it and, and you and you enjoy it do it <laughs> exactly and the other thing is you you probably didn't pick the best time to ask me that question coming off a week where i was kind of stumped and didn't give out any plays uh because i don't feel good about that but 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 i needed to do it for the uh the the information purposes so um, well, as I, I mean, said, when, when you refused to give out the picks, I, I, I called you an, uh, a, an honorable gentleman because you could have just thrown some picks out there just because it's expected of you. But uh, and it was the only way for you to make money, frankly, is to is to give out picks. Uh, but the numbers weren't there. They weren't there. And you honorably chose to give out none. So we respect that. Well, well, I, I appreciate that, but, you know, I mean, in all fairness, I have my own money at stake and I'm partners with all of my other players as well. So, you know, if I was just a willy nilly throw out plays and it loses, that costs me money as well. So uh, I want to do the right thing. Right. All right. Let's wrap up this show by reminding people to go to Substack. Handicap Hustle on Substack. You can subscribe for free and get the free weekly newsletter. And then for a mere $79 a month, you'll get Rich's usually three picks a weekend, but there's no guarantee <laughs> of that. But uh, you're going you're to be getting at least uh, at least 10 picks uh, per month, if not more. And as we said, he is on a winning clip this season at 64%. So go to Handicap Hustle on Substack and keep checking out our show Every week on Tuesdays, Handicap Hustle here on the Crosscheck Media Network. Rich, see you And next remember, week. I use a rifle, not a shotgun. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Next week. Bye-bye.